This is the Krillcast. I'm Chris. And I'm Matt from the Wise Fish. And uh, before we get into the throw, throw, throwback Thursday topic, um, what is your channel all about? Uh, my channel looks at video game reviews. I do classic reviews of uh, games that I've just loved over the years and new game reviews. I also cover some lore, recently covered some lore, and I do streams on Twitch. So a wide variety of things. If you guys want to oh, get a really some nice, gameplay stuff. If you want to get into a really nice, uh, relaxed video by Mister Wisefish, go check out his mindless fun on Fall Guys video. It was pretty cool. That was good fun. <laughs> I need to get into this game. I think next month I'm going to pick it up and start streaming it for a minute. Uh, Among Us has sort of taken over it, unfortunately, but yeah, it's still good fun. Oh yeah, Among Us has really taken over, but I I really enjoyed Fall Guys, and uh, might have a parody coming out about Fall Guys with some music. Might have to pay attention to the channel for a minute, see if I do that. <laughs> um, we'll see. I'll hold you to it. <laughs> might have to do with a uh, third eye blind. But I can't even talk. Third eye blind song. <laughs> Anyways, that's my only hint. Uh, <laughs> today we're going to be talking about uh, what game? Is uh, it Counter Strike? Or Half Life. It's mm. <laughs> well, I don't know. <laughs> Depends what version you're talking about, really. We're actually going to be talking about um, Counter Strike, which is also known as Half Life Counter Strike. It was a first-person shooter game developed by, well, Valve, of course. Um, it was initially developed and released Half Life, a Half Life modification by. Uh, I'm going to pronounce this really wrong, but it's Min, I think Min H Min. I don't know. Gooseman Le, Lee or Lay. And then uh, Jess Cliff in 1999, and before Lay and Cliff were hired, I think it's Lay. Hopefully, I'm not pronouncing this wrong. Apologies ahead of time. Sorry. Um, <laughs> the game's intellectual property was acquired, so Valve said, "Hey, this is cool. We want it. We want all of that. Give it to us. Here's money." Um, Counter Strike was released by Valve for Microsoft Windows November 9th, 2000, and it's since it's so close to the two decades anniversary or 20 year anniversary. Um, that's why we're covering it today. Um, the game is the first installment in the Counter-Strike series with several remakes and ports that have been released on Xbox as well as OS X and Linux or OS X, depending on who you are and how you pronounce that. I always say OS X. I'm weird. Um, <laughs> set in various locations around the globe, players assume the roles of counter-terrorist forces and terrorist militants opposing them. During each round of gameplay, the two teams are tasked with defeating the other by the means of either achieving the map's objectives or eliminating all of the enemy combatants. Each player may customize their arsenal of weapons and accessories at the beginning of every match, with currency being earned after each or after after the end of each round. And I do believe that Call of Duty has copied this format pretty significantly, and that's why um, half or Counter Strike slash CS:GO and Call of Duty are kind of uttered in the same breath at this point in time. Yep, basically. <laughs> so. Uh, what was your experience with Counter Strike? Were you into it back when it was brand new? Uh, I, I played like a few, but no, it wasn't my cup of tea really. Um, I was more into the story-driven games, to mm -hmm. be honest. And Counter Strike was one of those you got to be like a die-hard PC gamer, really. But by that point, I was like, uh, you know, original Xbox or Dreamcast and stuff. So I never really played it to be honest especially when it was in its early days with when it was a mod um uh the the first time i played it was csgo actually that was the first time i played it that was um, me too actually yeah it, i don't know I, I had always seen videos of it but it just never really appealed to me i think because i always saw it as more of a competitive sport uh, you know a competitive sport and game with you know the very small esports at the time, I I felt like you know that's not my cup of tea. I like more casual stuff at the time. Um, Plus, it's not I, well I, optimized I, I, either. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's true. I mean, I did enjoy. I, I've enjoyed the CS:GO games that I've played. I, I I do have good fun with them. I just feel like there's a very competitive side to it that I just can't get into. That's not me personally. I find the making of Counter-Strike more interesting than the game itself. Like the fact that it was a mod of Half-Life when it first started. Oh, totally. I mean, I, I just love that Valve. I mean, I'm a big Valve fanboy, apparently. But <laughs> uh, I just love that Valve take mods by the community and just sort of license them. And just like, yeah, we like that idea. 
here's some money, we're going to buy it <laughs> off you for a fully licensed game. It's like, okay, perfect. And then you get these legendary games that have gone on to make millions at esports events and stuff like that, all because a group of modders decided they wanted a PvP game that was a bit more tactical. I just love it. I just think, like, yeah, like you say, the, the whole making of it is just incredible. Yeah, I, I have to say, for being a modification of Half-Life, uh, you know, just straight up a mod, it does feel like a completely different game, especially nowadays with CSGO being where it is. And the competitive the competitive scene of this game is insane. Just like, a, not quite Call of Duty, but I think some of the elite in CSGO are more like hardcore than like your call of duty fans are in a lot of cases oh man i mean i i've actually been to a few events and spoken to some of the the top players and i've watched them play it's insane it's just it's absolutely insane like you just see them as normal blokes when you go up to them and then you see them in the game and <laughs> it's just another level like they're so fast paced with a mouse and it, it's it's absolutely insane, but I, I've got to admit though, when I look, I'm looking back at this Counter Strike footage now. Apart from that menu, it doesn't look like Half Life. No, quite honestly, and it's it does amaze me that this was its own thing. It had its own identity. It and looks I, I like uh, it's fantastic. Call of Duty almost. Yeah, yeah, and you can see where Call of Duty kind of got it from, really. Oh yeah, especially now when they've cop- copied one of the game modes where you buy items and stuff like that. But just yeah, you know the the good guys versus the terrorists, sort mm-hmm. of you know cliche thing. I suppose you could say that Counter Strike was one of the forefronts of it, and I don't think we'd get many FPS uh, esport events if it wasn't for Counter Strike. I don't think. I would agree with that by completely. And it is funny because you brought up earlier, like Valve has been very friendly towards modders, hackers and stuff, especially if they like the idea. There's a lot of companies that go, I mean, they go both ways, really. Like Sega is very on like hiring their fans who mod the games or make their own versions. Like Sonic Mania was a fan project that turned into a full fledged game. Whereas (laughs) you got Microsoft trying to do DMCA takedowns of uh, El Dorito, but then now they've embraced it and they realize it's better for both the fans and the, uh and the company to just allow these things to kind of exist and work yeah. with those teams so microsoft's That's learning but, the, but they still haven't fully learned from it like no the, the, the mods and stuff are missing and i think that's what valve and and companies like that do they know what people like so mm-hmm. when a mod team come up with a game and it's popular valve don't go we're shutting that down we'll make it ourselves they just go people are enjoying this we have the money to back it, have some money for your idea. Oh, and we'll Microsoft take partnered with um, some of the El Dorito team, actually. Did you did you not hear about that? Oh, that that is true, yeah. But they still feel like, you know, with El Dorito, there was so much <laughs> to it compared to what MCC on PC is. Fair enough. And, you know, when Microsoft have bought that, it's great that they have brought in those modders and stuff like that. But at the same time, it's like it's no, it's no Counter-Strike modding yeah purchase you know like and the, the, they've had so many other games there's been so many games that have been modded from half life that've gone into their own you know actual full on titles this i just think well, it's straight up black mesa uh steam allowed that yeah yeah exactly and they're all in, they're in full support of it they you know they're just like no it's great they used the source engine they did something that we didn't really want to do which was remaster the first game because they didn't want to you know put resources into that someone else did it for them they're just like good on them and we'll take that 30 percent profit <laughs> yeah yeah of course it's the source engine so you know um but you know I, I just think they although they are a big corporation they do make money from it i still think that they know what the players want and you can see that through things like counter-strike and team fortress 2 which was also a mod from you know, Half-Life as well. so Or Counter-Strike, I can't remember which one it was. But all these ideas are from mods because that's what the players wanted to play. And, and you got Prop Hunt as well. And Halo took that as well. So 
mods can just be turned into really good fan favorites and i think valve really embraces that and you got to praise them for that i think yeah because i would say sony and nintendo are on the opposite side of the spectrum where it's like nope don't make stuff on our ips <laughs> yep yep don't gonna... have an emulator yeah exactly so Here's i guess 50 50 dollar version of the game <laughs> that you were playing a minute ago until we copyright striked it <laughs> And then the last thing I just want to quickly cover is uh, this was like the first game where Valve implemented their anti-cheat system. Yeah. And uh, the I mean, reason the reason they did it, actually, they were licensing another another um, software for anti-cheat. And uh, they ended up like not paying for it at some point or something. So like the contract <laughs> just ended and they made their own. <laughs> I mean, why not? <laughs> they avoided it. So. No, that's great. I mean, it, it's not the best anti-cheat but for the time, it was revolutionary, I think. Because mm-hmm. cheats are just... They were plague in PC. It did um, start, like, auto-banning people for just, like, customizations. Like, even, like... Uh, say you change the color of your gun. <laughs> so oh, yeah, it was yeah, a little yeah. controversial at the time. But overall, I think I think an anti-cheating thing at some point had to come out. Especially to have a thriving competitive scene. But uh, don't be... Don't be modifying anything in the game to not get auto banned back in like 2000. <laughs> yeah, that's it. And, and I mean, we we take it for value now, like take it for granted now. Like have an anti cheat. That that's that's in every game now, especially when it comes to PC. Like you boot up MCC and the first thing you see is the anti cheat thing. Mm-hmm. So you know it did path the way for more easygoing competitive play without getting angry at someone who floats <laughs> through a wall. God mode activated. Yeah, yeah, exactly. So, yeah, I mean, it wasn't great at the time, but it was, it pushed it forward. So, it was good for them, really. Mm -hmm. Well, anyways, uh, I think we'll call it. Uh, We've had, we already had an hour long episode yesterday. Go watch the interview with Mr. Wise Fish himself. Um, (laughs) But uh, this is, this is our episode on the version of Half Life Counter Strike, which, you know, 2000 this is really good for a game from 2000 and it's widescreen obviously based on the video by hall of first person games go subscribe to him if you want to see this video Um, as always i'm chris and i'm matt from wise fish and we will see you on the next crowcast hell yeah Um.